So we're going to talk through depth first and breadth first today. So we're going to have a look at this network, this tree structure, and we're going to search it to find Q. So let's start with breadth first. In both breadth first and depth first, we've got two structures going on. We have a list of to visit and a list of already visited. So this is our list of where we're going to go to. This is where we've been. So the first thing we do is we put the root node A on our to be visited list. The already visited has nothing in there. We're going to be using a queue for the breadth first. So we now take A off and we put it onto our already visited because we've been there. And we put whatever A is attached to in to the queue. So we're going to put B and C onto our to visit list. So it's a queue, so we start with the front of the queue. This means that we now take B off there and we put that on our already visited list and we add whatever's on B to our Q. So our Q now has C, D and E on there. We then repeat the process, start with C, put whatever's on C onto our to visit list. So we have D, F, G and H on there. And then we keep, we keep repeating this process so whatever's on D gets added to the end, and then next time around we go to E. So by doing this, we're searching through our tree. So take E off, put J and K onto our list. Then we've got F. We go to, we can see our already visited list is because of the order that we put here. We're getting our A, B, C, D, and F. So it's no surprise the next one's going to be G from here. Put whatever's on, add G to our already visited list. And whatever's on G, which is nothing this time, gets added there. So now we're left with H. Put H on our already visited list. We've then, that means we put the, to visit, we put N on there, because that's what's connected to H. Which then takes us to I, from here. So I goes onto our already visited list. And which means we put the, the O on the end of here. So the next one we go to is J, from here. So we put J on our already visited list. What's connected to J? Nothing. So we don't add anything to our queue. Then we get to K. Add K to our already visited list. Is there anything connected to K? No. So we don't add anything to our queue here. Next one we get to is M. So we add M to our list. Of already visited. This time we do add something because M is connected to Q, so we put Q at the end. Oh. Well, we know Q is in our list and we're searching for Q. So we can just keep going on. 
M's the next one. Uh, we add that to our list. Is there anything connected to N? No, so we don't add anything to our queue. No pun intended. And then we keep doing this. O, O goes to our already visited. And then we don't add anything because there's nothing connected to it. So we're left with P and Q. We go to P, there, add that. Anything there? No. And we're left with Q. Well, we've actually found everything that we want. So now we've got the whole list there, and this list is empty. So that's breakfast. It was going across, really, if you look at the numbers, the letter, sorry. You know, we're going across this way. So we're going breadth, width, to do this. So the next one is depth first. Same problem. This time we're going to use a stack instead of a queue. So we start off the same. We've still got the same two lists to visit and already visited. So we start, put A on there, our already visited has nothing in there. Now, now we go to A and this time we add them. Our top of our stack is going to be here. So we put C and then B. The goal that we're looking for is really what Debt First does is go and search as far off to the left in this case as possible before going up. It's always trying to go left until it can't. Then we'll try go up one level right and then go down. So we've got our B here. That's the top of our stack, so we take it off, put it onto our already visited list, and we add our new elements E and D onto our stack, and we put them in that order. So we'll have the C that we've already got there, but we're putting E and then D on there. Remember, we're doing a stack, so it's the last thing we put on is the first thing we take off. So D becomes the next one we go to. Put that on there. Have we have we got anything connected to it? Yes. So we put that onto our stack. So then top of our stack is now this I. We go to there and we add the I to our already visited and we add the O that's connected to I to the top of the stack. So we go to O, put O on our list. Is there anything to add on there? No. So we don't want to add anything, which means the next one we go to is E. That's now the top of our stack, so we're back to here. Is E, has E got anything attached to it? Yes. So we add to our stack K and J. Notice I'm still trying to keep going there. Sometimes put the things at the top of the stack are ideally those that are more left on the, the screen. Which means we go to J, put J on our already visited. Has J got anything attached to it? No. Well, then we go to uh, K. That's the next one. That's the next one in our stack because Jay's gone. Has that got anything? No. So we don't add anything, which gives us C. So we've done. We've searched through all of these. Now we're over here. 
So now we've got C. We add our things that are attached to C, which is actually H, G, and F. F is down top of our stack. So we go, we put F onto our list. And we put whatever's attached to F onto our stack. M and L. L is now the top of our stack. So we put whatever's attached to L onto our stack which means we've got P on there. Which means, guess what, we go to P. P goes on, we look at P. Has it got anything attached to it? No. So we don't add anything. Which means the next thing in our stack is the M. M actually has Q attached to it. So we put Q to onto our stack. So Q is the next one that we go to and actually Q is the thing that we're looking for. So we didn't need to go to G, H and N. Notice N doesn't actually appear in these at all. So if you want to read around this a little bit more Here's an oldie but a goodie. It's quite a nice introduction to this problem.